Hello friends and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we are going to learn about file and directory permissions in Linux. So, let's begin and first get a bit brief about permissions in Linux. So, Linux is a multi-user operating system. So, it has security to prevent people from accessing each other's confidential files. Now, when you execute an ls command, you are not given any information about the security of the files because by default ls only lists the name of the files. You can get more information by using the long listing option by typing ls-l. Now let's decipher the hyphen l here. The first character will be either a dash which means it is a file or a D which means it is a directory or an L which indicates it is a link. In this example, ABC is a regular file and desktop is a directory. The next 9 characters show the security which we learn about it in a moment. The next column shows the owner of the file. In this case, it is me and my user ID is user. The next column shows the group owner of the file. In my case, it is the user group of people which have special access to this file. The next column shows the size of the file in bytes. And the next column shows the date and time of the file it was last modified. And of course, the last column gives us the file name. Ok, so I missed one column which is this one and it indicates the number of links to that file or directory. So, let's learn how can we decipher these security characters. The R means you can read the file's content. The W means you can write or modify the file's content. And an X means you can execute the file. This permission is given only if the file is an executable one like a script. If any of the RWX characters is replaced with a dash, then that permission has been revoked. The first three RWX are for user. The next three RWX are for group and the last three RWX is for any other user. Let's learn a, a bit more about user, group and others. So these are the three permission categories which is user, group and others. The user permission apply only to the owner of the file or directory and they will not impact the action of other users. The group permissions apply only to the group that has been assigned to the file or directory. They will not affect the actions of other users. And the others permission apply to all other users in the system. Now let's learn about reading the security permissions correctly. So here we have a file named abc and an ls-l gives us this output. Now the first character is a dash which means that it is a normal file. The first three characters that is the user's permission for this file abc is rw dash. This means that the owner of the file, that is user or me, can read the file contents or modify the file contents. I cannot execute it because it is not a program. It is a text file. Had it been an executable script and with same permissions, I would not have been able to execute it as the X permission is not granted here. 
The RW hyphen is the second set of three characters, which means that the members of the group user can also read and write the files. The final three characters show the permissions allowed to anyone on this Linux system. We have R dash dash. This means anyone in our Linux world can read, but they cannot modify the contents of the files or execute it. Let's see this in action on the system in which I already have some dummy files with different per permissions. So I am in my desktop directory and I have three text files and two executable script files in my desktop directory. I have modified the permissions for all the files so that we can see the difference. And yes, we will learn about modifying permissions later. So let me do a ls hyphen l and look at their permissions. So for the first file that is file1.txt, we do not have any rwx permission for the user. For file2, we have the read permission but we do not have the write or execute permission. For file3, we have both read and write permissions. Coming to the script files, for script1, we have read write but we do not have an execute permission and for script2, we have all three read write and execute permissions. Now, so let's try accessing and modifying these files. Starting with file 1, since we do not have any of the rwx permission, if I try to do a cat space file1.txt, it will give me a permission denied error. Similarly, if I try to write to the file by doing a cat greater greater than file1.txt, it will also give me a permission denied file. Let's move on to file 2. Let me do a cat space file2.txt and we got the output that we have file2 written in this file. Now let me try to add some content to this file by doing a cat double greater than file2.txt and you can see that it gave me a permission denied file error because the right permission has not been granted for file2. Coming to file3 we have both read and write permissions. So I can do a cat file3.txt and I got the content inside file3. Now if I do a cat double greater than file3.txt and type some content here and exit it. So let me just again do a cat file3.txt and you can see that the content of file 3 has been modified because we have both read and write permission for file 3. Coming to the script files. Now to execute a script, we do a dot slash script name dot sh. Now I am trying to execute script 1 dot sh. You can see that it gave me a permission denied error because I do not have the execute permission for this script file. Let me try to do the same for script2.sh. And by the way, script2.sh just has an ls command. So that means that if I run this script2.sh, output should be the same as that of an ls command. You can see that it got successfully executed. Now this was for files. Permissions behave a bit differently when we treat them with directories. So let's jump on to directories now. For directories, read permission is required for a user to use a command such as ls to view the files contained in a directory. A write permission allows the user to create, delete or modify any file or subdirectories and an execute permission is required for a user to cd into that directory. 
let's see them in action. So I am in my home directory and I have modified the permissions of some of the directories which are there. Let's see them using ls-l. You can see that all the three read, write and execute have been granted for the desktop directory for user. For the documents directory, read has not been granted. For downloads directory, execute has not been granted. And for music directory, a write has not been granted. So let's see the difference. For desktop, since we have all the three read, write and execute, I can simply do a cd into a desktop, coming back to the home directory, or I can do a ls of desktop, or I can create a file inside desktop. Let, next, let's move on the documents directory. I do not have the read permission for the documents directory. So let me try to do an ls documents. And you can see that we got an error of permission denied. Moving on to downloads directory. If I try to do a cd into downloads directory, it will give me an error because the execute permission has not been granted for the downloads directory. Moving on to the music directory, I do not have the write permission in music directory. So if I try to do a touch space music slash file name, it will give me a permission denied as write permission has not been granted for the music directory. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.